Manchester United's bad season is perfectly reflected in perhaps their worst player in the team, Anthony, as the Brazilian is literally the butt of all jokes at Old Trafford. From a promising talent, he has now proven himself to be the complete opposite of what the fans of the Red Devils wanted. How exactly is Anthony this bad? And can he even recover? In the 2023-24 season, after making 21 appearances in just his second year in the Premier League since joining, Anthony has managed to surprise everyone by providing a grand total of zero goals and zero assists. In the previous year, there was a considerable debate about the most overrated players in the Premier League, with Darwin Nunez, Mihailo Mudrik and Anthony emerging as the top three. And while it was a close contest among the three, Darwin had displayed some recent goal-scoring prowess, and although Mudrik had been disappointing overall, Anthony was deemed the biggest flop in the league. This raises questions about why Anthony, valued at an astounding 100 million euros, became one of the most expensive transfers in Premier League history. Manchester United's management decision-making came under scrutiny, rightfully so, considering Anthony's performances, which are more like a championship-level player rather than a player in a team vying for the top and the significant investment made in him. Even when attempting to find highlights from his season, there are only a few moments that qualify as noteworthy. And while acknowledging Anthony's youth and potential upside, the overwhelming criticism of his game seems entirely justified. To understand the extent of Anthony's struggles, we need to reflect on the summer of 2022 when Manchester United, seemingly hopeful about their future, appointed what they believed would be a revolutionary manager in Ten Hag. With his recommendation, the club signed Anthony, who would go on to become their most expensive player in Eredivisie history. While I personally believe that Anthony was overvalued, it's undeniable that he was an exciting young player who showcased authentic Brazilian flair and showmanship. And despite facing criticisms for aspects like flopping, time-wasting and inefficient ball handling, Anthony displayed moments of brilliance with incredible skill moves that garnered millions of views on YouTube. Describing him as exciting and attributing massive potential to him was valid, however, it's essential to acknowledge that Anthony's consistency was a major issue. During his time as a winger at Ajax, especially when facing clubs like Groningen and being surrounded by a top-tier squad, Anthony seemed to have an easier time. He could effortlessly glide down the wing, breaking past defenders with ease, and yet his tendency to stall fluid movement by attempting to impress with excessive skill moves became a double-edged sword. While successful moves were a joy to watch and made it to highlight reels, more often than not they were unnecessary and less effective than playing intelligently and purposefully advancing the ball. Anthony's playstyle at Ajax wasn't drastically different from his approach at Manchester United. He would often bring the ball to a halt before executing stepovers or feints, which, though occasionally gathering crowd appreciation, proved to be an inefficient strategy. His reluctance to utilize his pace when beating defenders one-on-one, -on -one, opting instead to slow down or stop, highlighted the inefficiency of his style as a winger. Particularly, his skill moves seemed over the top and unnecessary, given his proficiency in one-two passing and advancing without coming to a standstill. Examining his first season at Ajax, Anthony had a reasonably decent take-on rate of 58%, meaning he beat defenders just over half the time, peaking at 66% in his last year with the club. However, comparing this to his current performance in the Premier League reveals a stark decline and raises concerns about the adaptability of his playing style to the demands of the English top flight. In his first season with Manchester United, Anthony's success rate in taking on defenders dropped to 39%, and in the 2023-2024 season, this rate hit an all-time low of 32.6%, placing him in the bottom percentile of Premier League wingers when it comes to beating players off the dribble. It's worth noting that the quality of defence he faced at Ajax may not have been as formidable as in the Premier League, yet Anthony has not made constructive changes to his playing style despite evident challenges. Anthony's decision-making has been a significant concern, especially over the past year as Premier League defenders no longer fall for his stationary skill moves, opting to either back off or bring additional defenders to strip the ball away, knowing he's reluctant to pass. Another aspect hindering his performance is his limited use of his weaker foot, which is confirmed by the fact that all four of his Premier League goals have come from his left foot, limiting his versatility and allowing defenders or goalkeepers extra time to adjust. Even United legend Paul Scholes has criticized Anthony, labeling him a one-trick pony and highlighting his lack of intelligent play as a winger as he emphasized the need for Anthony to develop a more well-rounded skill set, pointing out the deficiencies in his ability to beat defenders efficiently. While some argue that the current state of wingers is less dynamic than in the past, Anthony's statistics reveal a decline in his shooting accuracy from 33% to 25%, along with a decrease in the number of passes per game as Anthony seems increasingly determined to bring the ball up by himself, reminiscent of his playing style at Ajax. But this has not translated to success in the Premier League. 
While Anthony's defensive aspect has shown improvement midway through the season, it remains clear that his primary focus should be on refining his decision-making. And whether adapting his dribbling approach or moving off the ball more intelligently, Anthony needs to demonstrate a higher level of strategic thinking to become an effective winger. Despite being 23 years old and still considered young, his high price tag invites criticism, underscoring the need for marked improvement in his performance. It appears that Anthony is grappling with a significant loss of confidence, but there's a potential for him to become a good player if he adopts a more strategic approach. Emphasizing the importance of training his weaker foot could enhance his overall skill set, allowing him to be more versatile in both dribbling and passing situations, and shifting away from a reliance on his left foot could broaden his capabilities and make him less predictable on the field. Acknowledging Anthony's recent struggles, it's crucial to consider the potential impact of the domestic violence allegations on his mental state. While I would refrain from making judgments on his guilt or innocence without sufficient evidence, it's evident that these allegations may have affected him mentally. In challenging times, maintaining focus is paramount, as the distraction could hinder his performance. Regardless of the legal outcome, Anthony needs to find a way to stay focused on the pitch to ensure that his best days are not behind him. On another note, Anthony has come to symbolize the issues plaguing Old Trafford not necessarily due to his individual skill level, but rather because Manchester United has placed him in a role he was ill-suited for from the start. In a pivotal moment as the club aspires to usher in a new era, Anthony represents a reflection of many of the repeated mistakes from the previous one. The same internal recruitment department that valued Anthony at £25 million when assessing the winger during his time at Ajax has valued Anthony Alanga as more productive than Anthony. And if you are following the Premier League, you would see how this is turning out so far. That Ten Hag has had such a strong influence over transfer strategy at Old Trafford also points to the gross mismanagement within Manchester United. It's natural and logical for a manager to have some say over the players that are signed in the transfer market, but most elite-level clubs have a more coherent approach. With Sir Jim Ratcliffe and Ineos now in the door as minority owners at Manchester United, the club will shortly undergo an overhaul. Everything about the club, from recruitment to playing style to the facilities, will be assessed and a route forward into the future will be plotted. Mistakes from the past must be learned from. In another environment, Anthony might have thrived. He was a key part of an Ajax team that won successive Eredivisie titles in the Netherlands and made a mark on the Champions League. The 23-year-old is a Brazilian international and travelled to the 2022 World Cup with the Seleção. At Manchester United, though, Anthony is in the wrong place at the wrong time. Hopefully, he will have a positive turnaround in his career, as it's essential to recognize that he has the potential to be truly entertaining on the pitch. With the right mindset, strategic adjustments, and a commitment to improvement, Anthony could rediscover his form and contribute positively to his team. But that's a combined effort of him and the team. If one of those factors doesn't work, then I'm afraid Anthony's career at Old Trafford will come to an end sooner rather than later. What do you think? Can Anthony turn it around? Let us know in the comments below and we will see you in the next video.